Welcome, Flyers fans. You're listening to Chris Mayer, Flyers Fan Mania 93 on YouTube. So, obviously, as you as you can tell, and by the way that I that I tweeted last night, I was waiting till this morning uh, to do this video, be for a, hand, a handful of reasons, considering the fact that you know to the Flyers to ultimately lose this game, they gave up a shorthanded goal uh, in 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 the remaining minute, where literally all they had to do was just hold the puck, um, and you know I actually wanted to to show some. Emotion uh, instead of whispering last night at, at two two thirty in the morning when I was done finishing watching the game when everybody else in my house was still asleep. Um, you know, if I'm starting out starting out with the positives, uh, you know, I, I thought Morgan Frost had a good game. Um, I thought that the Hayes. Mayhew and Van Riemsdyk line was very good. Um, I thought York had a good game. Konechny, Drew, uh, obviously Drew getting his. 900th point there um, on a goal. Uh, you know, Atkinson, you know, you know, all things considered, yeah, that's great. You know, we continue to have these little positives in each games. But, you know, and when I sit there and I, you know, and I'm watching this, and I didn't necessarily think the Flyers played great past the first period. Uh, it was more of, you know, it, it kind of felt like Montreal was taking it to them. It felt like they kind of, kind of had the advantage of the game. And Mike Yo was 100% right post game. It didn't seem like the lead was safe at all, um, because when the Flyers scored that goal, when Drew made it two to one, I said it w wouldn't surprise me if Montreal scores right after. Bam, minute seven after it's two two, and then the Flyers would go up. And of course, like why wouldn't they give up a shorthanded goal, you know, w with a minute left? Well, w w why wouldn't that happen on a play where you know you you kind of you know it it doesn't seem like it's. Uh, you know, it's 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 just ridiculous. And of course, why wouldn't Cole, you know, Cole, Cole Caulfield score in, in overtime out of all players? You know, it, it it's like the same things over and over and over again that just continue to hurt them, that continue to sting. And you know, I, I we've been sitting here and we've been, you know, for, for me personally, I've been sitting here trying to figure out each little positive in each game, which obviously you have to do that, but like. It is so unbelievably frustrating when you not even give up a, a goal like that. But everybody likes to pick on Ristolainen on that play. And I tweeted this out. And somebody put a, a, a video gif of the play. And mentions how Ristolainen was dove out of the play. Mr. Linen is the only guy on this play that actually touched the puck. Sanheim is the one that completely overreacts, and for some reason, I don't know why he did it, but went straight to the Canadians forward, and every other flyer, and again, three guys I'm going to mention here, Broussard, Atkinson, and Giroux, all been in the league longer than 10 years, just going to say that as well, are all literally looking this way, and the puck is already past them by the time they can turn around, and it's in the back of the net, and Hart's sitting there. Like, it, it, it's been like this for two seasons already, where nobody knows what to do in the defensive zone. And it felt like around the 12-minute mark of the third, every time Montreal got into that zone, every flyer was looking at the puck. And it's not it hasn't been the first time this year. It's continued literally all season, where if the puck's in one area, everybody's looking this way, or if it goes back that way. Like, they, they just follow it, and nobody has a single assignment. All Broussard had to do was look behind him. There was no need for Sanheim to do that. Atkinson and Giroux were kind of just gliding with the way that the puck's going. And it's in the net. Like, all you had to do was just hold the puck. It's all they had to do was hold it. I mean, it, it's the same things over and over and over again. If you remember the Chicago game, they had a power play. What did they do? They held it for, I don't know, 40 seconds. And then Chicago had maybe one chance with 20 seconds left. It's all they had to do. That shows me right there that they were not confident enough in themselves to at least try to win this game because that was two completely different teams last night. You know, I talk about the Chicago game because that was one of their best games of the year, and I talk about last night because last night is a game where it, they are so fragile, it's not even funny. I mean, they are, it's unbelievable 
how soft the steam is. And w- when you sit there and you look at it and you watch it every single night, it's the same thing. It's not like it's a different thing every night that's hurt them. The last two seasons, it's literally been the exact same things that have hurt them over and over and over again. I swear to God, you could go back in every video that I have made in the past two years, and you probably could clip that, and it could probably be closer to a five, six-minute video where I say over and over and over again because it's, it's, it's literally the same thing every time. Um, but, yeah, I mean, look. If we're if we're again if we're looking at positives, I thought Morgan Frost was fantastic last night. Um, it, it, he's 100 percent more effective on the wing, and at this point, you might as well because they're going to try to mold him to be something completely different than what he should be at center. Not even going to get into that. That's unbelievably frustrating. Um, but again, you know, I thought the Flyers had a really good first period. Uh, you know, they controlled the play, played with pace, and. When I look at what Mike Yo had said, I think Mike Yo deserves a lot more a lot more credit than than what he's he's got because if you're, if I'm being honest, it, it it would be nice for him to actually coach with a, a legit roster to maybe see what he could do because I think he's done a lot of different things, but he was pissed off last night and I I can't say I blame him. Um, you know, it, it's he's basically just just said like that he just has to find new ways to to try to drill it into their heads of what they need to do, and you know it, it it's it's like he's now talking about benching certain people, and if I'm being honest, I wouldn't be surprised if he benches maybe a guy like Broussard for that play. Like I again, I can't necessarily see how you don't consider that. I understand nobody was really, like, at fault, and I don't want to just pick on Broussard, but he's the center, and, like, his guy essentially in that play because Bristol is in the corner because he did the best he could on that. Sanheim overreacted. That w- is essentially Broussard's player. So it's like, I, I have no idea what he's going to do. And, you know, now everybody, everybody might answer, you know, why isn't he benching guys now? Why didn't he do it before? I think the reason he's doing it now is because I think if you think about it, well, for for, for one, they played the worst team in the league last night by NHL standards. I think they honestly thought they could have won that game. And after the first period, it actually felt like the Flyers were going to win that game um, if they kind of continued to play that pace. Had a brutal second period, and, you know, it, it, it's things like that where they think that they can win these games and they talk about it and if when they're not able to and they give up a shorthanded goal in the last minute uh again they as when they were on the power play um you know it, it's things like that that can drive a coach crazy and i i can't say i blame him at all because again he's coaching for a job next season certain players are playing for a contract next year they want to be able to win games and you know when when Mike Yo only has 10 wins since taking over um, as Flyers head coach that's that that doesn't necessarily look great for him um, going into next year not saying he won't get a job or anything like that but um, obviously he wants to pick up as many wins as possible so I can't necessarily blame him for saying he's gonna bench guys and I wouldn't be surprised if he does um, but then again on, on which he mentioned post game he doesn't even know if they have enough guys to call up so that's the other thing as well is he might not even be able to by default because everything that's going on with the Lehigh Valley this year um, but yeah th- th- that's kind of the year it's been it's been the fact that you have, an AHL team that you don't even like. You're literally your NHL head coach doesn't even know if you can call up guys, because that's how bad of a year it's been. So, I'll leave you with that. Um, remember, Seek Geek Garrick Construction. You can check those out. Link in the description below. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just they they keep finding um, more ways to to piss everybody off. That's that's kind of how I've been looking at this at this Flyer season because it's been the same continuous mistakes and it, it, they rip your heart out that, that's all i'm gonna say so uh thank you guys for watching and uh i'll talk to you all again soon